with barely 48 hours till the conduct of the governorship and state houses of assembly elections the court of appeal on wednesday refused to restrain the independent national electoral commission from reconfiguring the bimodal voter accreditation system machines will discuss the implications of this for the ongoing litigation over results of the presidential elections in Nigeria. We'll also be looking at the latest from the African Under-20 Championship, where Nigeria's Flying Eagles have been doing the country proud. And then we'll talk about Nigerian women's sport as a world-marked International Women's Day. And of course, we have a usual take at the uh, top stories on the front pages of today's National Dailies with in-depth analysis coming away all this on The Breakfast. All right, it's a Friday morning. We're here with the ultimate edition of The Breakfast. Uh, and of course, uh, my name is Kofi Bartels. Glad to be back. Don't worry, Messi and I are not uh, wearing a uniform. This is not uh, maybe children's choir or something. <laughs> well, it's good to yeah. be back on your screen. I am Messi Bopo. All right. Uh, we're set to do justice to um, today's topics. Very interesting. The Beavers uh, case has been heard. We all know what's going on, but we still have to talk about it because there's still some more talking points and matters arising. We'll discuss that as usual. And we'll talk sports. Um, uh, the Flying Eagles... Um, uh, it's giving some mixed, mixed feelings to people out there, Nigerians, football fans. But let's start with our top trending um, uh, segment. We look at the stories, uh, driving conversations in the social space. The first one, yesterday we broke the news in the morning while we were here, an unfortunate incident of um, an accident involving a uh, bus or rapid transport um, vehicle, which was being used to convey staff of uh, Lagos State Government uh, to work in the morning, and a train. Um, at the PWD junction in Ikeja. I hope we can, we can have a look at that uh, video and the incidents there. Of course, we can see the, uh, uh, the scene of the accident. Uh, so far, so far uh, from that incident, we hear six people uh, have lost their lives. Six people have lost their lives. And uh, we hear about uh, 102 uh, persons um, were taken to the hospital by the paramedics right there at the scene. And the hospital we're talking about is the um, Lagos University uh, Teaching Hospital. We hear about uh, 102 victims uh, were taken to the accident scene. Um, several persons went to donate blood, um, not just at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, uh, also, we're looking at other hospitals in Lagos State. The governor of Lagos State was there to um, uh, to look at those who were injured, and of course, the um, uh, to try and see what they can do to make sure that they are better treated. But what we hear is that the bus driver was um, he was quite uh, how would I put it? Uh, he was quite um, she was aggressive and refused to listen to the uh, the warnings of the, the flagman at that PWD uh, Shogun Leaxis, where there is a train crossing. You know, when you get to a point where the train crosses the road, you have to stop. Um, so this happened yesterday morning. We were here on air when we announced it. The train was coming from Agege area of Lagos State and met the bus, you know, on the rail crossing and smashed that bus. Uh, one of the onlookers said that the incident happened as early as 8 a.m. or just before 8 a.m. And like we said, the body count, the death toll right now is six. 102 persons rushed to Luth yesterday and out of that we hear six are dead. Very sad indeed. Um, what uh, is the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency saying? They put out a statement yesterday saying the incident happened around 7.38 this morning. Uh, a train collided with the bus. We have activated our emergency effort plan uh, and all key stakeholders that are important uh, to the emergency are on ground. It's what um, the last summer, Legal State Emergency Management Agency uh, uh, said. 
apart from that, they also put out um, a situation report. It's quite long, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't read too much into it. Um, but they said that they had the agency's LRT at Kappa alongside LRT at C3 LRU Paramedics and uh, C3 Paramedics Onipanu uh, Kappa Lassam Bus as Lagos State Ambulance Service. Okay, Nigeria Police Force, LASMA, LNSC, and the Nigerian Army were responders at the scene. They also were able to um, evacuate the bus so that uh, the place could be uh, rearranged and reordered. And I think everybody did a yeoman's job yesterday. So that's what, but to, to tell you the latest, what the, the statistics that we have from the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, 102 persons were taken there, six people dead. Uh, the Lagos State Governor also took the stats from uh, Lasso and then they put those stats out as well. Um, so that's uh, what we, we can say. Merci. Well, um, so, so the reaction from Nigerians first is, is very unfortunate. And I remember when we you know, took that uh, breaking story right here yesterday, what our, our heart and our prayers uh, was out to those who have lost their loved ones. It's really, really unfortunate at this particular time. Well, I, I, like I always say, I think that some accidents can be avoided. There are a lot of accidents that we experience that can be avoided. In that case, if you were even able to put out the video, and if you have seen the video, how the driver, how, what, what really happened? Are we not supposed to have barriers or a blockade or something, uh, you know, so you don't have the crossing of another vehicle, uh, especially when you have a train track? So that would be, you know, another question. And then, you know, was the driver in the right frame of mind? I think that we really need to pay attention to those who are, you know, handling vehicles, whether it's your personal car, whether, you know, it's a, for an organization or what have you, or you're into the transport business, because one would category, I mean, uh, categorically look at that and say, this probably might just be a, a suicide, you know? This driver probably would have been on a suicide mm. mission. It's really scary. Honestly, if you, you, you saw the video, Kofi. Did you see how did the vehicle navigate, you know, the, the bus navigate its way to that particular point? That's, that's a good question. How did the bus navigate its way? You know, if, if, you, if you were around at the days of Molue in Lagos, I think uh, you ask yourself, yourself the same question, how they get sometimes on top of some bridges, how they even fly on top of some, how they even land where they land. You know, so it, it's, it's a very, very... Uh, germane question to ask how did the how on earth did the guy did the, the, the bus get to that point you know because you know when you have um uh, uh most times when you have the the truck the, the, the train coming something has to happen in this case we're told we're told that there was a flag man but the red flag stop 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 so you use the word suicide mission or suicide attempt and i mean even if you don't um intend to kill yourself or to kill anyone, you can actually be embarked on suicide if you refuse to do the right thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, we move yeah. on. Before, before, before we move on, um, um, I mean, you know, the, 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 the another thing you mentioned, which I think is, we need to reiterate, it's very important, is, is having the, the, the right um, uh, mechanisms to be able to warn drivers, vehicles who are on rail crossings, because there are a number of them in Lagos and other cities in Nigeria that have rail trains, that um, uh, a train is coming. You know, back in the day in Mercy, uh, we used to have, what do you call them, um, uh, bells. You hear bang, bang, bang. You know, you know that this is a train. I don't, I don't not know. I won't try to, I don't want to uh, conjecture here, but I don't know if, if there was a train, uh, there was a bell rung in that place. Do they have that? Then also, in some, in some parts of the country, I know that we've seen, uh, what do you call it again? Um, uh, 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 barriers, you know. So automatically, if a train is coming, the barrier is going to, it's just going to fold, you know. And then we have lights, you know. So do we have these things? Um, the Nigeria Railway Corporation are the managers of the uh, uh, such uh, facilities, and so they have to answer. They have to tell people what exactly is going on. Whether we still have those barriers? Because a, a flagman alone is to me is not enough. You know, you need more. You need more. Okay, you need more. A flagman to me is not enough. You need more. Um, at the end of the day, lives have been lost. I mean, I saw Mercy, they, 
the, 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 the victims who were being pulled out, they were bleeding live. You know, this was, this was really, really uh, a dangerous uh, uh, incident, you know, very dangerous incident. But another aspect of this, which I think um, we must also look at, is the fact that uh, uh, some dust was raised as to how the, uh, the victims were being uh, taken care of. You know, some dust was raised as to how the victims were being taken care of. Um, there is a video that was circulated on social media uh, showing uh, the victims being, being uh, uh, addressed, I'm sorry, attended to on the floor, on the floor. Um, and the, 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 what do you call it, the, um, uh, the chief press secretary to the governor of Lagos State had to uh, put out a video, you know, saying that, uh, uh, a tweet rather, saying that um, this is a normal way of, 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 I just want to go to his tweet so I can read it. But he said this is a normal way of attending to uh, uh, victims of such incidents. He called, he used the word triage, you know, triage, which is an interesting word. You know, he used the word triage, which is an interesting word. So I'll just read the tweet of um, the, the chief press secretary to the governor of Lagos State. And then maybe we'll look at the tweet of uh, the governor of Lagos State himself. Uh, Boyega Akasile is the, is the name of the uh, chief press secretary uh, to the governor of Lagos State. And um, this is what he said. He says, our attention uh, has been drawn uh, to a video making the rounds about the treatment of the patients who were involved in the early morning accident at Lasuth. And he says, for the avoidance of doubt, no one is treated on the floor. What you see is called a triage. It is global standard practice. What you see is called a triage. It is global standard practice. And then he showed the video. And that video uh, showed people, you know, lying on the floor, you know, at last week, outside in the open space. And then he went to say uh, it's global standard practice in the hospital during an emergency of this magnitude. A triage is the uh, is a preliminary assessment of patients or casualties in order to determine the urgency of their need for treatment and the nature of uh, treatment required. Uh, it says Kate Henshaw, uh, your auntie, uh, Linda KJ and others should take note. Thank you. Um, and then also we can look at the, uh, the statement of uh, the, the governor of Lagos State, who also uh, put out a tweet saying, I was at Lasuth to understand the condition of the victims of the bus and train accident. The governor says, uh, uh, the team at Lasuth expertly set up an outdoor triage center, expertly, uh, which has contributed uh, in saving lives and speeding up injury level, injury level profiling, rather, and supporting immediate uh, critical attention. Um, so, of course, uh, the, 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 there was there's an attempt, you can see from the governor, uh, to quickly um, let people know that, oh, if you see people outside on the floor, it's a trash, it's, it's, not, it's, it's the best thing for doctors to do. You can see he tried to um, uh, take charge of the narrative, you know, to take charge, I want to use that word, take charge of the narrative um, and to let people know that this really helped. But his chief press secretary went on to address those who were worried about that outdoor treatment. Of, of. But the thing about it is this, the chief medical director of um, the Lagos State University Hospital said something yesterday. He said that, yes, indeed, the triage is a, is a global standard of best practice thing to do. He says global best practice. But he also said something. You know, he said that they have a 30-bed emergency unit at Lasuth, 30-bed. And that the 30-bed emergency unit was, was, um, had patients in it already at the time the emergency, uh, the victims were brought to the hospital. You know, and he went on to say that they received 85 patients at once at 8 a.m. Now, if you look at a 30-bed emergency uh, unit, and then you look at the fact that you have to receive 85 patients at one, once, that is what we call a patient surge. And they're not prepared for that. I mean, 30-bed hospital, 30-bed um, emergency unit, what are you going to do with 85? And this is what we call a mass casualty incident, an MCI. And in these mass casualty incidents, you have to just do uh, sort of a, a temporary arrangement, you know, you know. So, so that is it. But the thing about it is that medical practitioners, some doctors I spoke to yesterday, late last night, in fact, this morning, told me that um, 
that this is not the way to go about it. That where things are done properly, when the ambulance services get to the scene, uh, what they have to do is they have to do the triage there. Uh, this is what doctor in UK told me yesterday, that what they're trained to do, as far as he knows, is that they have to um, take care of the triage or do the triage at the scene of the accident. Place them on the floor, you know, try to see who is who, try to sort out. The triage is important. To know those who need, um, because they have categories of, of injury, and those who are just walking injured, they can just clean them up and they go home. Those who may have broken bones, you need to be careful when you're carrying them. Those who urgently need blood, okay? Those who don't need too much blood, just minor treatment, so you can know who to give priority attention to. But what he told me was that before you get to the hospital, as the ambulance and the paramedics and co are doing their thing, they've already sent information to the, to the emergency, uh, accident and emergency people who be on standby with their, uh, with their wheelers, those beds that have tires under them, whatever they call them. Again. So now when they receive them, they wheel them directly to the A&E to start taking care of them. That's what he told me. I'm not an expert in this field. But what I think we can say for sure is that it is not global standard practice to attend people in the open outside anywhere in the world. Why, Mercy? In the open. Because you could have a rainfall, okay? You could have... Uh, um, uh, what do they call it again? Uh, you could have snow. Right now in, in, in the United Kingdom, they are said to have the coldest time of the year. I don't know if I hear or seen those images, images, but you said to have the coldest time of the year. And if you have the coldest time of the year, then you can't be keeping people outside in the cold. At least, the least you can do. What we see in war zones, mercy, even in war zones, earthquake zones, they have tents. And you remember those COVID-19 tents that, that we had in Lagos? Very beautiful arrangement. But, but yeah, you, that is the kind of thing we ought to see. If you want to have a trial, you will have a massive proper tent, one. proper one, not canopy. Mercy. Uh, I mean, so, if you look, so if you look coffee, at the images, coffee. you see that they had to hire canopies. Because I saw the name of the rental company so, on, so, on top so, of the So the thing is, I mean, for um, if the hospital, hospital uh, emergency birds, they don't have enough bed space, mm -hmm. how do you then expect them to be able to afford the tent when, I mean, if you have that resource, mm -hmm. you probably would have had enough bed space, 30,000 or three, 30, 30, 30,000. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about 30,000 here now? We're talking about 30 bed space. space. 30. Emergency but not units. Yes, not thousand. Yes. No, no, 30 bed space. Yes. So you see and there are people already there. So, yes. Okay. So, 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 so the thing is, if the government, you know, or the hospital mm -hmm. cannot afford you know the bed space that they need they just have 30 bed space and at the mm -hmm. time the emergency is 85 mm -hmm. how do you then handle it so yeah um, yeah um, there's so, no so, there's no possibility so, i mean expecting them to have um you know the regular tent i mean what's obtainable best practice uh when we talk about best practices almost like mm -hmm. uh, expecting them to give what they don't have because if they had enough bed space they probably wouldn't have need for you know that tent Mm. So, 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 so then, then we have to now say, therefore, that the, the issue is not about global best practices that you have to treat. The issue is that they did not have enough space. Exactly. That is, that is the issue. If you come tell me that the, the fact that you were treating people out in the open, I mean, uh, they put, they put the, the mattresses on the floor. Okay. And then, you know, and I mean, kudos to the governor. He went there. We give him credit for that. He went to look at them, went to see them, and of course, uh, listen to them. And when the governor comes, everybody, everybody all resources will be available to, to these people. All right, the Commissioner for Health, uh, Professor Tunja Bayumi, was there on ground, you know, even supervising the erection of canopies, you know. Coffee, so, 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 we, we, we what, what, move on from yeah, that. But what, um, it, what, what it seems, Messi, if you look at the canopies that were erected, where the canopies were erected is a bit different from where they were throwing those mattresses when the, the ambulances first came. It looks like it was almost an afterthought. So let's get canopies. And they went to rent canopies. Now, if you have a stand uh, by triage in the hospital that's meant to take care of uh, uh, mass casualty incidents, then you would already have something there. Not going to rent canopies as an afterthought. Now, Mercy, sorry, this is, uh, this is the final one before. Lagos is a city of 15 to 20 million people. Okay, and, and some medical experts tell me that in order to avoid such overcrowding in, when you have MCIs, you, you distribute the, the, the casualties or the victims to different uh, uh, hospitals in the country. They also tell me that you need to have levels of, um, of alert, and they say there's something you call a blackout, that if you can declare this blackout, 
any hospital anywhere in, 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 in Lagos. Now this took place in the Keja. So the likes of Reddington and Co., any hospital that is of high standard can be taken over. They have to close down, shut down to receive these people, pri private hospitals. At the end of the day, government will pay the bill. So the, the point is this. If we had um, enough hospitals in, in, in Lagos State, uh, or if they had a, an emergency plan in place, you know, they won't have, to have had to take everybody to Luth. They could have taken some to even private hospitals where they have facilities in big and large enough to attend to mass casualty incidents. So that's something, something to note. Mm. You know, that's something to well, note. Well, this conversation, uh, you know, will not end. Always uh, when we talk about some of these issues, uh, we say we hope that the government, on the other hand, would act, you know, in terms of implementing. But it's, it's like mm. uh, when you constantly have the case reoccurring, then it means that we've not learned anything. Yeah, but but also this. also we must not forget to add that the, the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency and then the uh, Nigeria Railway Corporation, uh, they're blaming the driver, and he's a government driver, uh, of, of, of being complicit in this in this uh, accident, and we don't know what his fate his fate will be. And that's why we tell our drivers to to drive carefully. Mercy, it was some, some months ago I was saying to myself, you know, that wow, this, this BRT, we thank God, oh, you know, that they haven't gone the way of Molo. The government of Lagos has done well to, uh, you know, to have a system where drivers are professionally trained. But you know, the days of Molo where they were flying off the bridges, you know, flying off the bridges, Qatar Bridge, you know, you see them hanging, you know, you know, flying to the Lagos Lagoon. But this time, we've not had incident. So I think it's, it's, it's kudos, and, um, but we need to do more. Say, so, okay, now we'll call the drivers again, um, whether it's um, any of the companies, you know, and sit them down and reorientate them to tell them you need to, you need to be careful. You know, we need to have an investigation into this to find out what was in the mind, what happened to the driver? Why didn't he stop when he was flat down? Thanks, sir. Well, so um, next on the top trending is that uh, a Nigerian is involved in this particular incident. She's being declared wanted, I mean, the most wanted list in Italy. Uh, so the federal government has also contributed in extraditing a suspected human trafficker uh, by the name Joy Jeffy to Italy to face criminal charges. She's 48 years old and uh, she's one of the few women on Italy's list of 100 most wanted criminals uh, that was extradited by Nigerian authorities. Uh, that happened just uh, uh, within the week here. Now, Jeff has been also on that list since 2010. That's according to a report after she was accused of playing a leading role in illegal transporting of Nigerian girls to Italy, Netherlands, and Spain for um, you know, prostitution and, of course, trafficking. Uh, however, it's also been reported that she runs a cartel where this recruitment is done. These women uh, here in Nigeria, they are transported to uh, European countries and they are used uh, where, you know, violence and all of that. I mean, if you look at the movies, you can only imagine what these people uh, are going through. Now, the fact that she's been tried and sentenced 13 years in prison in absentia by the Italian authorities is not, you know, a joke. Uh, and that process had started since uh, 2022, that's 2022, uh, June 4th. So, it feels like it was a big one uh, for, you know, the Italian government and also the Nigerian government. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And uh, Messi, this story um, was carried internationally. It's, it's a big story, really. Uh, I saw it on Yahoo News. I saw it on Australian news websites. They had the video, everything, you know, and it, it was a big story. In fact, all these news wires, uh, news agencies made money from this story. It was carried all over the world. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it seems this lady, Joy Jeff, or Jeffy Joy, which whatever her name is, is uh, quite, um, she's, she's very important to the Italians. They want to have her. They've been trying to have her for a long time. And I think uh, the head of the Italian criminal agency was saying that um, uh, he, they enjoyed good cooperation between themselves, the Nigerian, um, uh, Nigerian justice system, particularly the Minister of Justice, who agreed to this extradition. Remember how it took a long time for Hush Puppy, no, for, not Hush Puppy, for Abakari, you know, well, how, it's, how long it's taken, and the tussle between the Americans and, and the Nigerian government over the extradition of Abakari. You know, it's been a long drawn thing, and people are almost forgetting about it. But this particular one, it, it was just um, like hot knife through butter, you know. It took a while, but um, she was taken out 
of the country. I saw, you know, when she got to Italy, um, she was not working well, you know, sleeping, yeah, and then I they had to that. put her in a wheelchair. And I saw the care and attention that they gave to her, you know, they even pitying her, you know. And I said, wow, that is something we need to learn here. That if you take a, even a criminal in, you have to treat them with dignity and humanity. Um, this is a case of uh, alleged trafficking in, in girls. You know, it's a case of alleged um, taking girls out of the country for prosecution, a prostitution, you know, deceiving them. And then when you take them, there's a case of allegedly um, using, you know, cultists, criminals, and mafia to intimidate these girls and to, and to basically force them to, to engage in prostitution against their will, you know, threatening their lives and threatening them, you know, to keep them in bondage. So it's a case of alleged forced slavery, you know, uh, intimidation, threat to life. You're looking at um, uh, uh, um, illegal migration, okay, uh, human trafficking, you want to call it that, uh, a whole lot. Now, these are all allegations that um, uh, the, uh, the, um, the Italian uh, legal system will have to prove. I'm sure the lady will also have her time to defend herself in court. You know, then we now know whether indeed she's uh, guilty as charged or not, you know. So that is that. We, we won't rush to conclusion yet, but this is not the first time we're hearing of a Nigerian sort of mafia in Italy, you know, or in any part of the world, particularly in Italy, engaging in such a, a act. It's not the first time. And we'll watch this case. It's a big one. It's a really big one. Watch this case to see uh, where it goes. But, you know, we just celebrated International Women's Day in Messi. And uh, it's a day where we talk about the dignity of women, uh, women empowerment and, and gender equality. Uh, and I think that, you know, a female folk out there, the ladies should be doing their best to not put the fellow women in harm's way. Because it's already difficult getting the men to, to, to agree to the fact that women deserve to be treated equally. You know, so women need to stop these things to do that are not helping the cause of gender equality and women's rights. We're talking about um, uh, 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 gender-based violence, GBV. We're fighting against it because it is the one to stamp it out of our society. And, and, and women should be leading the cause in, in fighting gender-based violence. But when you have um, women now victimizing other women, girls, then it makes it harder. Co now, Kofi I'm not saying she's guilty. We'll wait for the court to Yes, to, to, we'll to, definitely to wait that. for the court yeah. to, to yeah. you know, see how it pans out. But we need to move on, and that's because we're out of time. We'll definitely, you know, come through with more interesting uh, top trending stories, of course, on Monday. But when we come back on the other side, it'll be time for us to go through the papers with G.D. Johnson, all things being equal. Please stay with us.